Hey everyone, welcome to another Sophisticated Saturday where together we work through my to-do list and get stuff done around the house. So I just came into my office here to jump the day off right, work on writing out my to-do list first so I have a list of all of the things I wanna try and get done. I have some work that I need to do on my computer. I have a few orders that I wanna fill from my website. So I am gonna start in my office a little bit once I finish writing up my to-do list, packing those orders, and then editing a few YouTube videos videos, working on emails. I had some thank you notes to write. So just in general, a lot of office time. So I won't bore you with all of that, but I did want to get started with the packing of orders and then we'll jump into the rest of the stuff around the house. Once I finished up with all of the work in my office, I went upstairs to my bedroom to strip the bed. I wanted to wash all of my sheets today. Typically I do this on Sundays as part of my cleaning routine, but our sheets were dirty. They needed to be washed. And actually, spoiler alert at the end of this, right after I finished making the entire bed and I actually washed everything today. I washed even the covers to the pillow shams, like our decorative pillows. I washed all of the items on the bed. We had a little baby spit up incident right after we finished making the bed at the end of the day. So that was so frustrating because I spent a lot of the day washing all of these sheets, but hey, it happens. My cleaning routine for washing the sheets is that I typically wash just the sheets every week and then the duvet cover every other week. And then these decorative pillow covers and sham covers, those are more like quarterly or maybe even a little bit less often because they're not really on our bed when we're on the bed, so they're not getting dirty very often but they actually, one of them had a spot on it, which kind of prompted me to wash them today. I washed all of the white sheets together, including the duvet cover, but I do separate out the duvet cover and the sheets when I put them in the dryer. I just feel like it's too much in the dryer, but it's not necessary to separate it out as I wash it. I just find that it actually dries faster and more efficiently when I do the duvet cover separately and the sheets separately, or else they also get tangled within each other. It wasn't my intention. Maybe we should have been friends. So you're someone I used to know, but nobody said it'd be easy. But maybe I should have known. On to Owen's room to do a quick pickup. I grabbed a blanket from his room. I was gonna actually stick that in the wash as well. Lots of little toys and books that I wanted to clean up. And then his rocking chair or glider is just covered in milk stains. So I grabbed a leather cleaner and wanted to wipe off all of those milk stains and just give it a good general clean. He sits on there and is a drooly little active baby. Sometimes he's still covered in food, I feel like, after we feed him. And it's been a while since I gave this a deep clean. Maybe we should have been friends. So I usually only nurse Owen at night in this chair, but our nanny is in here a lot with Owen during the day and stuff. So I think there's a lot of bottles 
and little milk droplets that get all over the place. Same with his nightstand. A lot of times we're pouring milk into bottles there, so there are some drips there. There was definitely a spot on that handle, so I wanted to wipe that off. And just good to give everything a little clean every now and then. His dresser that we use as a changing table also needed to be wiped off. Don't need to explain all the reasons why here, but I wiped off the top of it, just kind of moved things around, and then also chose to wipe off the changing pad. I love this one specifically because you can spray it down and wipe it down. You don't have to have different changing pad covers and constantly do the laundry. You can just wipe it clean, and we haven't had any issues with it. Oh, and starting to get a lot more mobile these days. So vacuuming his room as well as our bedroom floor that he sometimes crawls around on, but our living room floor has become very, very important because I don't want him getting any little piece of anything and grabbing it and putting it in his mouth. So he does a lot of playing around here in the mornings as I get him dressed or with the nanny and stuff. So I wanted to give this a good vacuum just to make sure there weren't any pieces on the floor there. This didn't take long, but it felt good to give everything a quick wipe down, pick up anything that was on the floor or the surfaces, and then a vacuum. If you do that in a few of your spaces, I think you'd be surprised at how little time it takes for you to do it and how much better your house feels. It is becoming a little bit more like fall over here, so I wanted to make a more fall-themed recipe. Today I'm making a penne pasta with sausage, butternut squash, and chard, and you're actually gonna see that I completely forget to put the butternut squash in this recipe. I don't know how that happened, but I realized that evening when I told Jim what I made and realized that there was no butternut squash in there. So it's good to know if you don't like butternut squash, this recipe turned out great without it. But the first thing that I did was measure out that penne pasta. I added eight ounces of penne pasta, but for now I'm letting that water boil while I get to prepping the rest of the ingredients. So I probably did a little more shallot than it called for. It says half a cup of finely chopped shallot. I had two very large shallots, which were starting to make my eyes water very quickly there. So you'll see I grabbed my onion goggles. They are so dorky. They are not a fashionable item by any means, but they really do help when I am tearing up. I've tried just wearing my normal glasses and that doesn't quite protect my eyes enough. I think maybe my eyes are just really sensitive. It happens pretty much with any type of onion for me, but these onion goggles seal against your face. And I bought the slightly more fashionable one. I'll see if I can find a link for them. These ones are tortoiseshell, but I know my mom has a pink pair of them. I think they have like a lime green one. So I'll try and see if I can find those because if you cry when you cut onions, you might enjoy these as well. I have heard there are some other strategies where like if you leave the eye of the onion on, and cut that part off last. That helps with preventing your eyes from tearing up. Or again, like I said, some people feel as if they put on their regular glasses and that provides a little bit of relief. I just throw these on and then can cut the onion whatever way I want and don't have issues. I got a little bit of ghee there in the saucepan and heated that up. You can use butter or olive oil. Added in my chopped shallots. I pre-cut up some smoked sausage. This is actually the Amy Lou brand from Costco. It's their chicken apple sausage, I think. And while that started to brown up, I went outside and grabbed some fresh sage from our little garden there. Some of these things are starting to die a little bit because it's been so hot. I can't keep up with the watering and the heat when it's 95 plus degrees. It seems like every single day in the summer here, but it has started to cool off a little bit. So hopefully the state that these plants are in, they'll be able to last a little bit longer. So 
I gave my pot a stir there and then went to rinse off the sage as good as I can. I get a little bit nervous with stuff from my garden. I've really been enjoying having fresh herbs and cooking with them, but I will say the other day I brought in some basil and I also brought in a spider friend with me. So I always make sure I rinse it really, really well and kind of get my fingers on each leaf and get any dirt off and then dry it off and just kind of double check it before chopping it up. Okay, water is boiling, so I added my penne in there. Time to also add in the sage. Two tablespoons of flour, mix that around. And then you're making a bit of a roux, so flour and milk. I added in two cups of almond milk. I like almond milk for cooking. I also use it for baking. I just like the fact that it is shelf stable. I can keep it around and don't have to worry about having fresh milk in the refrigerator all the time because I don't find myself drinking milk or using it ever. So having that is a lot easier for me and it doesn't really have a taste that affects anything. Once you get that going, you can add in a dash of nutmeg and a half teaspoon of salt. You'll see I started brewing myself a coffee there and added some pumpkin creamer. I made myself, I actually made that in my fall kind of clean and decorate with me video, which I will link in the cards above if you are interested in that and making that pumpkin creamer. But this recipe was well on its way. I added in a bunch of spinach and chard and a mix there to my pasta, let that wilt kept kind of stirring things and once it was done I could drain the pasta and add the sauce to the pasta and mix it all together. I also missed the fact that I added in one cup of fresh Parmesan cheese. It does call for pecorino cheese but Parmesan tasted great and I served it up with a little parm on the side and some more crushed red pepper flakes. But I know this might have been a little bit out of order since I forgot to mention the parm. I always try and list the ingredients on the screen so you can watch as I go, but I also will always link a recipe if it's available in the description box below, and this one I was able to find online. So you can check the description box below and find that recipe if you are interested, if that's easier for you to grab it online and print it out or however you do your recipes. When the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my skin Beginning to thaw from within Today Time for a quick kitchen cleanup there. I wanted to scrub down the pot that I used, get that in the dishwasher and get that running before I head upstairs and switch the laundry over. I didn't film it, but I did switch over half of the load of those sheets to the dryer. Like I mentioned, I was going to, I put the sheet part in the dryer and then I needed to, in a little bit, switch the duvet cover into the dryer and get those sheets on the bed. But they've all gone out the window of this car And when I feel the wind on my face Oh You'll see I'm using soft scrub to clean off my Le Creuset pan and pot there. I cleaned off just part of the lid because I was shocked at how white it made it and I wanted to show you if you can tell the difference there. The soft scrub is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen for cleaning.
Next up was to wipe off Owen's high chair and clean that up, get his tray cleaned from breakfast. He had some oatmeal and a little bit of water. I try and clean off his tray and bib and high chair as quickly as possible so that nothing gets caked on. It is just so much harder to clean the longer I wait. So the second I get him down for a nap or I'm able to put him down and he's happy, then I get right to wiping that off. Even if it's just like a quick rinse and I can do a deeper clean later, it just makes it a heck of a lot easier later. It was perfect timing because the dishwasher was now full. I could get the dishwasher started, switch those sheets over like I mentioned, get the duvet cover into the dryer and I have my next set of stuff kind of waiting in the wings to go into the dryer and then was able to start the last load of stuff that goes on the bed, my blanket and some of those sham covers that are black. into the bedroom to make the bed. This is a tedious process with all of the little pieces that needed to get put back on, but it feels so nice on the weekends to start then the next week with fresh sheets, minus that little bit of spit up that I mentioned, but hey, it was on Jim's side of the bed and not mine. He ended up sucking it up for a little bit before we washed it again. On a line, too scared to trust you and jump down. I'll keep my status quo up here, won't let anybody come near, I'll fix it on my own, 29 years I've been the same, trying so hard to run from shame, but how long can I keep up the pace, to fool myself I don't need grace. In the middle of making the bed, Owen woke up from his nap, so Jim just grabbed him as I was finishing up tucking in the top sheet here, and Owen started playing around on the floor with the duvet cover. He was being so cute and having so much fun, so I had to come and say hi to him. The area over by my nightstand was a disaster. I had some clothing that I needed to move. It was sitting in my nightstand and then the three tiered cart where we store a lot of stuff for Owen. We've been using it a lot less of course than we did when he was a newborn and he was sleeping in our bedroom with us, but we still use it a lot to change his diaper, have some diaper cream there. We read him stories and sometimes we're too lazy to put them back in his room and just store them on the cart. So I grabbed a bunch of that stuff that I could pull off of the cart that he is just not using anymore because he's old enough and not in our room as often or things that he is using but we've just been too lazy to put away and actually put those away. Same with my dresser. There were lots of things that were built up on top of the dresser, mostly just clothing that I hadn't put away. A couple of new items that I got from the Nordstrom sale that my mom had sent to me that she forgot to bring to us. Then just normal laundry that I hadn't put away. I don't know about you but the dresser is one of my guilty areas where it's hard for me to keep it constantly clean. It ends up being a little bit of a drop zone. So I try my best to not use that as a place to store my clothing and try and keep it clear of the clutter. But today clearly I failed, so I needed to put it all away. Since I was done cooking and cleaned up Owen's area, I wanted to clean the floors really well with our Bissell mop here. It is a wet, dry vacuum mop thing. I've shared it a bunch of times before and I really, really like it. I've told you guys that I like it. I continue to use it, but I did also just get a new mop that's better for quick cleans. And the reason I did that was because specifically Owen with his eating, I think it's just a lot easier sometimes to pull that mop out and just give it a quick spray and wipe. It's kind of like a Swiffer, but it's called a Bona Mop. I've had one in the past before. I love that I can pull the pads off of it and stick them in the washing machine. I got a few extra pads just because of how often I anticipate and see myself using it. 
this is better for a deeper clean. It's more of an ordeal to take it out, fill it up with water, pour the solution in it, and then you do really have to clean it pretty well after you use it so it doesn't get stinky because I've made the mistake of just pouring out the dirty water and not really cleaning it properly. I like to now clean the dirty water tank with some dish soap and let it dry out overnight or over a few hours before I put it back together. There's also a little stand that it comes with that you set the mop in and run like a cleaning cycle through it. And it helps to clean out the roller at the bottom and just cycle out anything else that might be dirty. And that does really help to get rid of any smells and stuff, but it's an extra step. So having the new Bona mop is a lot easier for those quick cleans. And then when I wanna do a deep clean, then I pull this baby out. And usually when I do that, I fill it up to the higher level. It has two different spots, one for a smaller, small area and one for a large area. So I fill it up for the large area and then typically we'll clean like all the downstairs floors and then bring it upstairs and deep clean all the upstairs floors as well just so I'm filling it up once and cleaning it once and really getting my efforts worth of it. Finally done cleaning the floor so I can slide my bar stools back to the kitchen island. And then I had some more picking up to do in the living room because with a baby, there's always toys everywhere. Even before a baby, the living room just kind of gets a little bit messy on the weekend. So I like to do a little tidy up. I shared some before and afters on Instagram of cleaning my spaces. And a few people said like, just leave the toys out, let them play. You'll see it barely takes me any time to throw everything in the bin there. It's not a lot of work and it gives me a whole lot of peace of mind and just reduces a lot of stress by picking things up every night and sometimes throughout the middle of the day. Last but not least, time to put the duvet cover back on to the duvet. Jim was actually around, so he popped in to help me get that done. And that is pretty much it for today's Sophisticated Saturday. So if you enjoyed, as always, I would really appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Every other Saturday, I do post a Sophisticated Saturday video. So there are tons of these, a playlist with I don't even know how many videos at this point, and then lots of other organizing, cleaning, meal planning, productivity, and tons of other videos on my channel if you would like to subscribe and check them out. But until next time, I will see you guys later.